Are you ready to level up your financial game? Well, listen up if you are new to this. Today, we're diving into the world of investment strategies that will have you investing like a pro in no time. But remember, a good investment strategy often takes a lot of time and is not considered a get-rich-quick scheme. But as with any strategy, it is critical to note that if you invest in market-based instruments, such as stocks and bonds, you may lose money in the short run. Hey all, welcome to our channel. Before we start, grab a pen and paper and let's get started on this exciting journey together. Let's first start with the reason why you should start investing at a young age. There are several reasons why you should start investing and this are the main ones. The first reason is to beat inflation. Inflation can erode the purchasing power of your money over time. Investing in assets that outpace inflation, such as stocks or real estate, can help you maintain the value of your wealth. The second reason is to take advantage of compounding. Investing your money allows it to grow through the power of compounding, where your investment returns generate returns of their own, leading to exponential growth over time. The third reason is to grow your wealth. The end goal of investing is growing your wealth. Investing is the tool to grow your money over time. By investing in assets such as stocks, bonds, and real estate, you have the potential to earn a return on your investment that exceeds the rate of inflation, helping you to build wealth. Like Warren Buffett once said, if you can't find a way to make money while you sleep, you are going to work until you die. So now you know the reason why you should start investing at a young age. But before we start with the different investing strategies, it is important to first pay off any high interest debts you might have. You cannot simply beat the interest rate that you pay for consumptive credit or credit card loan. So it should be your first goal to get free of high interest debts. Now you think you can finally start with investing, but unfortunately there is one more important thing you need to do first, and that is creating an emergency fund. A financial emergency fund is an essential part of your financial plan as it provides a safety net for unexpected expenses or events that could disrupt your income or finances. Here are a few reasons why having a financial emergency fund is crucial. First and foremost, to cover any unforeseen expenses. Unexpected expenses such as medical bills, car repairs, or home repairs can arise at any time. An emergency fund can help you cover these expenses without having to rely on credit cards or loans, which could lead to debt. The second reason is to cope with a job loss or income disruption. A financial emergency fund can help you stay afloat during a job loss. It can provide a temporary cushion until you find a new job or source of income. The third very important reason is the peace of mind. Having an emergency fund can provide you with peace of mind knowing that you are financially prepared for unexpected events. This can help reduce stress and anxiety around financial matters and can prevent you from stupid financial decisions. The last reason comes back to avoiding high interest debt. Without an emergency fund, you may be forced to take on high interest debt such as credit card debt to cover unexpected expenses. This can be expensive and could take a long time to pay off. In general, it's recommended to have three to six months worth of living expenses saved in your emergency fund. Building an emergency fund can take time, but it's worth the effort for the peace of mind it could provide in case of unexpected events. If you have paid off all your high interest debt and built up your emergency fund, then you are ready to start investing. The first strategy here is buy and hold. A buy and hold approach is a tried and true investment technique. This method entails doing precisely what the name implies, purchasing an investment and holding it indefinitely. Preferably, you should never sell the investment, but you should plan to keep it for at least three to five years. The buy and hold strategy focuses on the long term and thinking like an owner, avoiding the act of trading that lowers most investors' results. Your success is determined by the underlying business's performance over time. This is how you may eventually identify the stock market's biggest winners 
and perhaps earn hundreds of times your initial investment. The beauty of this method is that if you commit to never selling, you will never have to think about it again. You'll save money on capital gains taxes if you never sell. A long-term buy and hold approach implies that, unlike traders, you are not always focused on the market, allowing you to spend time doing things you enjoy rather than being tethered to the market all day. To be successful with this method, you must resist the urge to sell when the market becomes volatile. You'll have to put up with the market's occasionally sharp drops and a 50% or larger collapse is possible, with individual stocks potentially plunging much more. It's much easier said than done. The next strategy is buying index funds. This method entails locating an appealing stock index and then purchasing an index fund based on it. The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ Composite are two popular indexes. Each contains several of the market's best stocks, providing you with a well-diversified selection of investments, even if it is your only investment. You can get started with this list of the top index funds. Rather than attempting to outperform the market, you just own it through the fund and get its benefits. Investing in index funds is a basic strategy that can provide excellent profits, especially when combined with a buy and hold philosophy. The weighted average of the index assets will be your return. Also, a diverse portfolio is less risky than owning just a few stocks. Furthermore, you will not have to analyze specific stocks to invest in, which means you'll have more time to focus on other enjoyable activities while your money works for you. Investing in stocks can be dangerous, but holding a diversified portfolio of equities is thought to be a safer bet. Nevertheless, if you want to achieve the market's long-term gains, an average of 10% per year for the S&P 500, you must hold on and not sell. However, because you're purchasing a portfolio of stocks, you'll receive their average return rather than the return of the hottest stocks. But most investors, even professionals, struggle to outperform the indices over time. Another strategy for beginners is index and a few. The index and a few method combines the index fund strategy with a few minor stakes in the portfolio. For example, if you believe Apple and Amazon are well positioned for the long run, you can invest 94% of your money in index funds and 3% in each. This is an excellent approach for beginners to stick to a generally low risk index strategy while also getting some exposure to individual stocks they prefer. This method utilizes the best aspects of the index fund strategy, reduced risk, less labor, and high potential profits, and allows more aggressive investors to add a few holdings. Individual positions can let newcomers get their feet wet with stock analysis and investing while not costing too much if these investments don't pan out. As long as the individual positions remain a modest fraction of the portfolio, the risks are essentially the same as when purchasing the index. Unless you buy a lot of exceptionally outstanding or bad individual stocks, you'll still tend to get around the market's average return. Of course, if you intend to invest in specific stocks, you should put in the time and effort to learn how to assess them before you do so. Otherwise, your portfolio may suffer. Number four is income investing. Owning investments that provide cash distributions, such as dividend stocks and bonds, is known as income investing. Some of your return is in the form of actual cash, which you may spend as you wish or reinvest in more stocks and bonds. If you own income stocks, you may potentially benefit from capital gains in addition to cash income. Here are some top dividends, ETFs, and high dividend equities to look at. You don't have to pick specific stocks and bonds to adopt an income investing plan utilizing index funds or other income-focused products. Income investments tend to fluctuate less than other types of investments, and they provide the security of a regular cash payout. Furthermore, high-quality dividend stocks tend to raise their distributions over time, increasing your earnings with no further effort on your side. While lesser risk than equities in general, income stocks are still stocks and can decline as well. Individual stocks, on the other hand, 
can reduce their dividends to zero, leaving you with no payout and a capital loss. Bond rates aren't always appealing, and they might be so low that they don't keep up with inflation, leaving investors with less purchasing power. Also, if you possess bonds and dividend stocks in a standard brokerage account, you'll have to pay taxes on the income, so you might prefer to keep these assets in a retirement account like an IRA. The last strategy on this list is dollar cost averaging. The process of adding money to your investments at regular periods is known as dollar cost averaging. For instance, you may decide that you can invest $500 every month. So regardless of the market, you put $500 to work each month. Or you might add $125 each week. You spread out your buy points by making an investment regularly. By distributing your buy points, you reduce the possibility of timing the market or pouring all of your money in at once. Dollar cost averaging means that you'll obtain an average purchase price over time, ensuring that you're not overpaying. Dollar cost averaging is also useful for establishing a consistent investment discipline. Because you were rigorous in your strategy, you're likely to end up with a larger portfolio over time. While steady dollar cost averaging helps you avoid going all in at the exact wrong time, it also means you won't go all in at the exact right time. As a result, you're unlikely to get the best possible return on your investment. This is where we end the video. Remember that investing is not a get rich quick scheme. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this amazing channel so you don't miss out on any content from us. See you in the next video coming up.